opera. It's been said, opera is when a guy gets stabbed in the back, instead of bleeding, he sings. Count on famed New York columnist Robert Benchley to aim a playful jab at an art form originating in the elite courts of 16th century Italy. Here in Silicon Valley, where everything, even hailing a taxi, gets reinvented, opera is also being revisited and evolving with the $21 million renovation of the Veterans Building. Audiences, there are a lot of uh, new and younger people that are finding uh, opera to be uh, a pleasurable and moving experience. I've been invited to get an up-close look at the new Diane B. Wilsley Center for Opera. It's a big goofball. Big complexity. Oh my God. David Gockley has been San Francisco Opera's general director for the past decade. He'll be passing the torch this year. This project will be part of his legacy. Previously, we had rented uh, a place in the Presidio, mm -hmm. had to cart all the instruments, all the music stands, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Now we have it right here on the campus. Uh, it is acoustically uh, designed to be optimal for that purpose. And uh, as you see, this is a, a wonderful painting behind us that was donated by an Italian artist in honor of our music director, Nicola Luizotti, and it has many of the great singers, conductors, directors that have appeared at San Francisco Opera over nearly 92 years uh, since we were founded. Hearing the human voice up close and personal is a really transformative experience, mm -hmm. and so I'm absolutely delighted that we're getting a chance to do that in this brand new theater over here that literally just opened a few weeks ago. Part of it is really about what holds a mirror up to life, right, in terms of art, and that is the responsibility that we have to reflect humanity and the predicaments and you know trials and joys of being human. And I also have to say it comes a little bit from the gut in terms of feeling a real connection to a particular piece. When I first walked into this space, it was skylit from above and all of the glass panels were missing and buckets were everywhere because the skylights leaked like a sieve. There are acoustic isolation walls built around the entire perimeter of the space between the historic walls. So it looks all historic, it looks grand, but behind it is a lot of technology in order <laughs> to make sure it performs like a Tesla Model 3. <laughs> <laughs> That everybody's talking about today. Yeah. <laughs> well, and you also look at the, the history of court and um, song cycles and the presentation and also the discourse in terms of chamber and salon work and how the audience was, you know, essentially arriving at a place to have a shared experience, which was probably one of the only events that was going on because they weren't drawn to television or other things. I, you know, studied a little bit of music, um, played the piano. That was one of those things you do with Asian parents, get piano lessons, <laughs> a common pattern. Um, and, you know, I've seen Verdi, Wagner, and they're these huge, you know, orchestral sort of operas. Um, this smaller space, is it new works, reimagination of old works? What's the yeah, uh, uh, thinking there? They are reimagined uh, versions of existing works. We will find some way, I'm sure, in the next couple of years of doing a La Boheme or a Madame Butterfly in an intimate space. Mm. But also, we are doing new pieces by uh, contemporary composers that are conceiving their works for an intimate space. 
what better way to end my visit than to see a show in the new space. Svadba Wedding is a cappella opera. It captures the story of a Serbian bride-to-be and her five friends preparing for her wedding day. In this intimate space, I feel like this opera uncovers more the personal aspects of the human spirit. I think San Francisco opera is on to something. Any art form is a conversation with the generation before it. While it must stay true to itself, it must also push its own boundaries to stay meaningful to its audience.